Hello, everyone, and welcome to this open day session at the Creative Computing Institute. My name is Georgina Capdevila, and I work as Creative Learning Producer at the Creative Computing Institute, which from now on we're going to also refer to as CCI. So today we're here to talk all about the MS in Creative Computing. Thanks so much for joining us today. And in order to do that, we've got with us the course leader of the MSc, Phoenix Perry, and we also have current students at the course like UA and also two different uh, students that will be graduating just this year from the MSc, Chris and Nana. So to give you a little bit of an overview of how the section today is structured, we're going to start talking about the CCI first, the spaces, facilities and resources that are available to CCI students. Then we're going to share a little bit of an overview about the social mission and the public program of workshops and events at CCI. Then Phoenix will talk us through the approach, the structure, the units, all the content that you'll need to know about the MS in Creative Computing. And right after that, we're going to have the pleasure to invite Chris, Nana, and UA onto this stream to talk about all the questions that we've been receiving about the course and that I'm sure that will be super insightful and helpful for everyone here today. Just so you know, we always have the chat open, so feel free to send us any questions through on the YouTube comments uh, section, and we'll do our best to cover it all at the end of the session during the Q&A. But know that if there's anything that we don't have the time to cover, you can always email us at cci at arts.ac.uk, and we'll keep the conversation going over there. Also, in terms of accessibility, just wanted to let you know that this open day is being recorded and will be re-uploaded to CCI's YouTube channel. You will be sent a link right after the session. So know that if there's any detail that you miss, you'll have the opportunity to catch up at your own pace after the session today as well. So thanks for being here and let's get this started. We'll start by watching a video that my colleague Chloe Dunn recorded that will, you, will tell you a little bit more about the CCI and its spaces and resources. Thanks very much and see you in a bit. Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to show you around the campus and share some of the facilities and resources available to CCI students. The Creative Computing Institute is located at UAL's Peckham Road campus in Camberwell, South East London. From 2022, we'll have two new sites open in the Camberwell Peckham area. The Greencoat building, opening in January, will be used for teaching, technical and office spaces. Eagle Wharf will open in September and will provide a new Halls of Residence building for UAL students alongside a community outreach, events and exhibition space. Camberwell is a lively and unique area of South East London with good transport links to all parts of the city, including Brixton and Dalston. And we have three Halls of Residence that are all within walking distance of the CCI. The local area is home to a thriving art scene, which hosts a variety of art galleries and artist studios that students, graduates and staff work and exhibit in. On site we have two galleries, Camberwell Space and the Students' Union Gallery, with the South London Gallery right next door. Arts organisation Bull Tendencies runs an annual programme of live events and commissions, as well as hosting Frank's Bar on the Roof, with some of the best London views in the city. So here I've just named a few, but there are so many more galleries, cultural hubs and recreational spaces for you to explore that are right on our doorstep. To find out more about the local area, visit the Living in London page on the UAL website. On campus, we have many facilities and spaces for you to use. Our canteen has lots of food and drink options for everyone, with bike storage situated just outside. We have an art shop that offers affordable art supplies and whose staff can help advise you on the best materials for your projects. Also on site, we have an amazing library supported by a dedicated CCI librarian who oversees the subject area of creative computing. She ensures the library stays up to date with the books, periodicals, databases and other resources you need to complete your studies. The Learning Zone is part of the library and is situated on site in the Gardens Halls of Residence building. It's open 24 hours a day, meaning that you can study at a time that best suits you. And they have a range of equipment for you to use and laptops available to learn. To find out more about the spaces and facilities available to you, please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now let's take a look around. The CCI is located across the fourth and fifth floors in Block B at Peckham Road and is very accessible to students with various needs. 
Our lecture theatre is in the basement of Block B. This space is used for lectures as well as events. The fourth floor is used mostly for postgraduate teaching. Here, we have a new seminar room and a room which will house our laser cutter and some 3D printers too. The fifth floor is the heart of CCI. Our kitchen is a communal space as well as a learning space. At lunchtime, it becomes a social hub for CCI folks to share lunch together. And during classes, it's a quiet working space. We have pods which can be used when they are not booked as quiet spaces to work and a space to have your tutorials. Alongside are three classrooms, two seminar rooms and one high-end computer suite fitted with some of the latest technology, including 24 high-spec computers with NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics cards and 4K monitors for working on projects ranging from machine learning to 3D rendering and video editing. Additionally, many of these computers can be accessed remotely from home after hours to enable access to specialist software or the high performance for rendering or machine learning work. We also operate a laptop locker system where students can borrow a laptop to use within the CCI spaces. The physical computing lab is a space for students to do all of their electronics. Here we have everything students will need for soldering and testing things out. We have hundreds of different components which are available for you to use. There is also a sewing machine, embroidery machine, computerised knitting machine and 3D printers. This is just a glimpse of some of the amazing facilities and resources you'll have access to while studying at CCI. Hello again, I hope you found that useful. Now, a lot of students are also interested in finding out more about the opportunities, the workshops, the events that they would like that they would have the chance to take part in while studying at CCI. Therefore, the next video that I'm going to share with all of you will cover the social mission that underpins all the public program that we run at CCI, also the research themes that inform it very strongly, and the, um, the series of public programs that we've offered so far, just to give you a little bit of a sense of what you have the opportunity to take part in. Now, let's watch this together, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Hello everyone, my name is Georgina Cardevilacano and I am the creative learning producer at CCI. And my role focuses on planning and delivering CCI's public program, which I will briefly talk about in the next few minutes. Our public program is a platform that offers accessible learning experiences, workshops and events to literally anyone interested in getting a taste about creative competing or deepen their knowledge in the field. This program of activities is underpinned by CCI's three key research themes, which are creativity, machine learning and AI, human-computer interaction and platforms, big data and digital citizenship. The public program also responds to CCI's social mission aimed at integrating computational thinking with approaches to fairness and equality for the UAL community and beyond. Therefore, all our programs have a strong focus on diversity in technology, digital inclusion and digital entrepreneurship. We are committed to connecting students, practitioners and researchers with an international community of artists and technologies and where everyone can explore creative technology through fun and friendly and most of all accessible spaces. To give you a sense of what you have the chance to take part in while you're studying at CCI, I will just share quickly some of the programs that we've run in the past. A Technology and Powers Intensive Workshop and Public Symposium last year, we learned about human rights, internet technology regulations and alternative techno futures with Dr. Pixcraft and an amazing group of researchers, artists, activists and advocates. At tech for all conference, CCI staff members shared how we can creatively reimagine the way we use and design new technologies to create platforms, interactions, experiences, spaces and products that bring people together in community, respect, beauty and solidarity. At Querying Voice AI Intensive Course, a mix of UAL students explored how voice interfaces could be designed to support the embodied well-being of trans and non-binary people. And finally, they prototyped SIP a voice interface that connects trans and non-binary users to media created by their community. 
And last but not least, at Tech Yard, we keep creating a safe space for young kids in the local area of Peckham and Camberwell to learn about creative computing with Jasmine Morris and many other CCI staff and students. These are just a few of the activities that we've been running over the last few years, but there's a lot of free, accessible and interesting content in our YouTube channel, which I would love to invite you to check out at some point. For this next academic year, just so you have a taste as well of what's going on, we're working on a lot of different activities, which will include a couple of intensive workshops that will be open to all UAL and CCI students. We will also run a fellowship program on the field of experimental human-computer interaction. And there are many, many things that are on the way that we can't wait to share with you. As a CCI student, know that you will have the opportunity to be part of all these spaces and to meet other peers from across UAL and beyond, but this will be a safe space for you to explore your creative career, your creative practice alongside students coming from different courses, different levels and different programs that will for sure nurture your own views, your own perspectives and your own skill set. So I hope that this got you excited about joining CCI and we can't wait to share spaces with you in the future. Thanks a lot for your time. Goodbye for now. Hello again. So let's let's talk about the MS in Creative Computing, which is the reason why we're all here today. And it's a huge pleasure to invite the course leader of this amazing course, Phoenix Perry, onto this live stream. Hello, Phoenix. Hi, how are Thank you all doing? doing? I'll pass you the mic and yeah, okay. see you later. Thanks, Phoenix. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the MSc in Creative Computing. <clears throat> I hope my camera's not all floggy. Let's see. Who knows? Welcome to this wild adventure of, of streaming and the internet. Um, so we're here today to talk about the MSc in Creative Computing. So what are some things you should know about uh, the MSc? So there's a lot of really cool things that um, come to mind, but you're probably really interested in the people you'll be learning from and the classes you'll be taking, which is what I'd care about if I was a student. So first off, we have an amazing faculty. You've got a bunch of people I'm gonna mention and then I'll talk about myself. Um, you can learn more about me very easily. You have my name now, just Google. But we have Dr. Uh, Mick Gerson and he's a machine learning expert, which is super fun and um, good to know about. He's really interested in art with machine learning. So he's really looking into generative techniques with machine learning. We also have on staff, Dr. Rebecca Thiebrink, who is a human computer um, interaction researcher who makes machine learning tools for artists. And you can take classes in, in machine learning with uh, Rebecca, which are amazing. Makes teaching creative coding, which is really cool because he's got a 20 some year career at least in doing creative coding work. He's made plugins for tools like uh, Open Frameworks. He's got a plugin called Maximilian, which is really common uh, industry wide for sound. He's built some really great open source projects in the past, including Rapid uh, Lib, which is a EU funded project with a, a huge body of uh, partners to build a machine learning library, which I use in my research. He also has a long history of working with uh, accessibility and deeply understanding different communities to create tools using machine learning to make tech creative technologies more accessible. Um, and he's just a pretty much amazing person. And Rebecca does a lot of very similar work. They work together quite often. So like they both worked on Rapid Live together and uh, Rebecca's work also hits a lot of those same intersections. But Rebecca's much more interested in like creative practice. Like what Rebecca's most focused on is researching how creative artists use machine learning. So that's a really cool set of like skills to have around. And then you've got me, uh, I have a disability and I spend a lot of my life thinking about like how interfaces and embodied computing intersect with disability and also how they intersect with human rights and, and my experience as a technologist. And I've particularly been focused on making game engine interfaces more accessible 
during my career as an artist, uh, I just released a tool called Interactimal, which exists on Unity and Unreal. It's got like over 30,000 downloads right now. It's been out like two months on the uh, Epic Store. So if you're interested in my research and you use Unreal, go to the Epic Store and you can download it and check it out. It's a node-based machine learning uh, environment that lets you code machine learning without needing to actually write lines of code, which I think is pretty cool. And you can connect any input to any system of outputs you're interested in. And I am I just think it's very important that we build other kinds of interfaces. And I'm really interested in crypt techno science and how, as a person with a disability and people with disabilities, we can look at interfaces in new ways and empower basically crypt techno scientists to kind of work and make interfaces and art and projects and what that looks like. Uh, in my game Bot Party, which is, you can see, uh, one of the old cases from up there and one of the prototypes up there, uh, was a game about holding hands in public. And, you know, I really love making it. It let me let thousands of people touch me in a year, which was really crazy. But those are some of the staff you can learn from here at the MSC. And we've got a really deep, long history of researching accessibility, interface design, machine learning, and creative arts and generative coding. And if you're interested in that kind of thing, well, you've come to the right place. Uh, if you're interested in the MSC, I'd really say like, hey, it's the pandemic. You're probably like looking for some way to like deepen what it, you actually find personal meaning in. So if you're sitting in your, your desk job and going, oh my God, I cannot come to this job another day. I want to do something more meaningful and impactful with my life. You've, this is definitely a good way to start walking that path. I think that there's some incredible critical theory on this degree. Uh, I work on a critical theory class and the critical theory part of this MSc is really important to me and like really looking at ways that our technology impacts our world. And the social mission of CCI is threaded through all of our degrees, but it's particularly threaded through the MSc as a uh, creative practice. And so if you're, if you want to make things that impact the world, make the world a little bit better place to live in, um, this is the MSc for you. Um, it's not the MSc for you if you want to go make, you know, widgets in a factory or something. <laughs> uh, but if you do want to look at creative coding and technology and the intersection and the arts, you have, you've come to the right place. Um, the MSC has a really specific structure. Um, it's got basically four terms that run over about a year and a half. Uh, the first two terms, I front load on them. They're super heavy. They're, I joke when I say they're a kick to the face, but I'm not joking. They're extremely challenging two terms. Don't try and work if you can afford it. Um, it's it's a very heavy uh, load your brain full of all the goodness you need to make creative technologies. So it's creative coding, it's machine learning, it's physical computing, it's spatial playful environments, which is my thing. It is making with your peers and the people you're going to meet on this MSC are actually going to be a huge part of the MSC for you. And that community is really important. And I hope you've gotten that from like looking at the videos you just saw. Um, the CCI is a, uh, is a home for creatives, you know, so you're going to show up and hopefully you'll make some friends and you'll make work together and you'll show in the neighborhood and, you know, I'll, I'll probably do so get you to do shows with me because I love doing shows with my students. Um, and it's going to be really fun and engaging. And so these first three terms, you know, the first two are really heavy. Then it lightens up a second, a little bit on the third. But at the end of those three terms, you're going to have a whole new set of skills, a whole new set of colors in your paint box from which to go make amazing stuff. And then you're going to have a period of self-study where you select a supervisor from an amazing array of supervisors, all of the people I can get across the entirety of the CCI to supervise final projects. And you can pick someone. So like if you want to work with Matt Fernandez Plummer, for example, who's like an artist who works with machine learning or, you know, you can work with like Anna. She's course leader of the BSC. If she's doing it this year, we'll, we'll see if I can ask her to do it. I hope she says yes. But there are all these really amazing people um, at the CCI all doing incredible research and you can study with all of them. There are some funded pre research projects at the CCI and we're always trying to like nab people. One of the people we wanted to nab today, um, 
but who was too busy to come was a student who ended up then working at the CCI, then getting a big job and doing a PhD. And there's a really great ramp if you want to go do a PhD, but you're not quite ready and you don't know what you want to do it in or you need more skills, you don't feel like you're ready. The MSC is really great because we have a path to the MRES. It's just an extra term and straight into a PhD. So if you want to go that route, there, that's here for you. I know that I wish this would have been here. I wrote the degree that I wish I could have done. Um, my own background is I'm from, in, you know, NYU. And I came through uh, NYU. And then also I taught at NYU for years across four departments. And I care to name ITP, Integrated Digital Media, uh, the IDM program at uh, Tannen School for Engineering, the Computer Science Department. And, and, you know, I really wish this had existed when I was doing my master's. So this is my dream program. And I hope you enjoy it if you're if you come because I've put a lot of my heart and soul into it. And I think it shows in the caliber of the work that comes out of the students. And I, I crammed as much as I could. You can ask me anything about the classes. They're all incredible. I sit in on them myself because I just love our faculty that much. Uh, and I love working with them. So often I'll just come to lectures because the staff are interesting to listen to. Um, yeah, and then you make this thesis. You make this thesis at the end. You make this big project, which hopefully will set you up for like a new job or a new career, a new arts practice or future research work, whichever direction you kind of want to go. Um, and you'll write like something, which if you've never written a thing before, if you don't know what the methodology is, if you don't know how to do proper research, you'll begin to get your head around that process at the end of the uh, MSc. And it's, it's a super good time. I mean... <laughs> I enjoy it. I love it. I don't see it as like work per se, as much as just hanging out with a bunch of really cool artists and sharing my skills with them. And I think that that's a really common viewpoint across the MSC. It's not, you know, it's not a, I don't know how to say this. It's like, it's not a, like, it doesn't feel like a job up in here. It feels like, you know, a good time with, with cool fellows. Uh, and I feel like my students are my peers. I don't necessarily feel like there's a connection um, that, you know, there's a wall there. And to that regard, I'm going to show you about some of the projects we've made together. I love co-making with my students and it's an amazing journey for me. And I want to show a project that I did with the first year MSC students where I got a commission at Welcome Collection and I decided to invite all my students to work with me to build this massive installation together. We had an amazing time and they learned so much by like watching the public engage with it. And they came up with all these games. They improved the concept that I kind of started with and made it their own and made it like 10 times better than anything I would have made on my by myself. So can we play the Forest Daydream clip now? That would be really rad. This project called Forest Daydream, which is the third iteration of a project that I've been working on for several years with many different collaborators. It is a long-term research uh, agenda that I've had to look at social play in groups and collaboration in groups. 
So the project itself involves a couple of pieces. There is a small forest, which looks like a low poly video game forest and a small hut, which looks like a low poly video game hut. My thinking behind that is that we spend a lot of time in virtual natural environments when we move to cities. So pulling where we actually end up going back out into the real world and looking at it is an object. Um, so that's why it looks the way it does and the kind of architecture it has. Beyond that, each piece is interactive and then there are games which play out amongst the pieces and they require multiple people to play. So something will be happening over here and then you'll need a response to it over here. So there's no way to play it on your own. So you have to ask for help and ask for cooperation, which is one of the underlying philosophical points I'm trying to make in the game is that you can't do things on your own, you need to do them in groups. We have this class here that I'm leading right now on environmental computing and spatial computing. They are working with me on this project in an attempt to get experience working with a gallery with a large scale institution like Welcome Collection. So it's a uh, part of the pedagogical process of getting them from point A to point B, of being ready and able to work with the public and knowing what that looks like. Then from there, they're going to proceed to doing full scale works all on their own in public spaces. Personally, I was rather focused on the programming of the microcontrollers. All the different parts have to interact with each other, have to talk with each other. So every, every button press has to be signaled somewhere else and all the different parts have to be co coordinated into one single game. You've got sounds going on and lighting and all these physical models. So these really create an environment. I hope like people coming would feel relaxed. I worked on the soldering and the wiring, and I also helped with the construction of the dome and the trees. You are not designed for yourself, so you need to study how others behave and, uh, and they interact. My name is Ben Kelly. My role in Forest Daydream it was almost like a sound supervisor role to create an immersive soundscapes which evoke uh, the rainforest and also music composition. Los Bos Casinos is an a ongoing project with the Wampi, the indigenous community who live near the Ecuadorian border of the Amazonas rainforest. I spent some time with them two years ago and developed an ongoing relationship as an artist uh, to help with their government to help deforestation and indigenous land rights. The sound recordings, the soundscapes are very immersive as a, again a hyper reality to try and aim to trigger this emotional feeling, this primal feeling of interconnectivity with nature. I hope it stimulates audience members to ask themselves questions of their own role within the social ecological system. We need outlets for social collaboration and communication as adults. We don't get them enough. And we really have to think about how play sits in a modern society in, in new ways. Hi everybody, welcome back. So I think that that's kind of like a really good overview. Um, if you have any direct questions about the units or whatever, this is the structure. Can you guys please share the image that I showed earlier? So I shared an image earlier of the structure of the MSC, but I'll just talk you all through it really quick and it'll come up while I'm chatting. So, um, you know, like I was talking about the units earlier, we have uh, creative coding in the first term, critical studies in the first term, creative making and physical computing first term. The second term is 
uh, more creative coding, more uh, critical thinking. And then we do that class that you just saw the video for. So I hope that gives you a sense kind of like what's going on. And in term three, that class continues to run and you learn some machine learning work and then you build your own installation. So you have to go find where to do it. You have to do it in public space, but it's really cool because then you do it and you study that process and you really learn from it. And then you go straight into your thesis that I talked about earlier. So that's the kind of overview. And I think the best thing to sell the MSC program, like, or to tell you about it, um, is for you to talk to the students and to meet the students. And they're here today in a panel. So let's go ahead and kick it over to that. Thank you, Phoenix. That's great. So yeah, let's invite Chris. Hello, Chris. Let's Hi. invite UA. Hello. And Nana. Hello. Oh. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. <clears throat> and Nana should be there as well. Hi, everyone. Hey, Nana. Hope you can Lovely. Hear me. Yes, we can hear you yeah. well. Amazing. So we've got a set of questions that we received from the audience today that we're going to go through, plus the ones that we're receiving from the chat. So let's get started with this first one. How does this course differ from a computer science course? Who would like to take this one? Phoenix, do you want to give it a I mean, I can do it. I can give it a go. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So, uh, this science, okay, so I've taught on computer science courses, uh, taught at NYU, um, and I was in a computer science department at Goldsmiths, so I can answer this one really well. Uh, computing is not about making. They're two really different things. You're not going to be studying algorithms as like an abstract concept. I'm not going to have you sit here and optimize which way of sorting a giant database is more optimal, right? Like you're not going to spend your time going, um, which one of these formulas do I use to analyze the computational complexity of my algorithm? If that's what you're into, go to another degree. That's not this degree. You'll be sad. You'll be disappointed. If you want to make stuff, if you want to build stuff, this is the right degree. This is a degree that uses creative coding and computational technologies in a creative practice, and it's situated in an art school. So if you want to focus on processor speed and building the world's most optimized graphics card, this is not the degree for you. But if you want to make things and you want to like dream in the world in code, well, then you're in the right room. Can you hear me? Hey, no, no, we can. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we, we can, can hear you, Nana. Yes, we can. <laughs> Maybe he can't hear us. Great, great, great. So I just wanted to say, um, from a different computer science course, let me speak personally for what it did for me. It was, um, it was probably, it was more of a um, mind opener, if I should say. Um, if you can't hear me, just let me know. Um, sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties, but this course was a mind opener because um, I knew there was a lot of different aspects of computer science I wanted to get into. And this course kind of gave me the opportunity to explore. So that was one. It was really a good exploratory one um, for um, a lot of aspects or a lot of things that I didn't think I wanted to do. And I actually got into it. And um, my very evidence is my final project, which was in augmented reality, which I would never have guessed I would have done a project on it, you know, now, but I did. So that's one. Um, two, it was for me, it was a discipline builder because as much as um, we're given the leeway to really be ourselves on this course, you still have to sit down and make sure you do everything you're supposed to do. The first few months were a bit shaky. I'm not um, afraid to admit that, but it was really good because I was able to, you know, get out of my shell and actually, you know, build myself um, to the point where I was able to do my work correctly. And three, the one difference that was um, in it for me was the support. The support from staff, from teaching and non-teaching, or, you know, not the directly teaching staff, but like the administrative staff, people like Phoenix, Georgina, Chloe. I met all of them in different ways and different fashions. There was so much support in me being pushed out there to do what I wanted to do 
or opportunities that you know somebody thought was good for me and i'll just get an email from me like oh you should try this you should try that so for me it was really exploratory trust me there's a lot of content for this course and if you're somebody who really wants to you know experiment in all the different facets of in a high level this is a course for you the support was great and you would build your discipline because you would not want to you know um quote unquote fail yeah that's what i would say i hope that i hope that answers the question thank you nana that was great thanks so much for for sharing does anyone else want to add something on that front before we move on to the next question? No, we're good. Amazing. So another question that we received here is, is this degree useful for someone with a technical background who is looking to pivot into a creative industry? Who would like to touch on that one? Hey, I can start um, and then everyone else can take it. How about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, I There's so much art on this degree. There's so much making. So if you already know how to code, we do have people come on to the degree already super expert coders. What they get out of this is the critical studies bit. What they get out of this is the making bit, like how to think through building their own work and like really deepening their own practice. And the critical part of this degree is intense. I have ramped it up year after year after year and it is a mind opener like nana said there is a lot i do that really focuses on expanding your cognition and i do it across all the units so you will come out a different person is my goal um i want it to really change how you think about and see technology in the world thank you phoenix that's wonderful to hear and likewise i think we also received a lot of questions about what happens to someone who has a creative background and wants to get into the MSc? So maybe it would be good to hear from Chris or UA about your experience, where you come from, and what would you say to someone do you, do you in that situation? Something? Yeah, of course, go ahead. Sure. So let me add it first. Uh, I used to study product design. And before yeah, I came I here, I work as a freelance designer for like around six years, including the time that I was in my uni and after I graduated from the uni. So um, I think uh, for me, I was like so uh, like nervous about if I can get used to doing all of those creative artworks by using computing or like uh, physical things, physical computers and things like that. And but I think as long as you don't afraid of coding, you will get really get used to it and enjoy it. Because I think um, the way that we present our arts is not about the way that we think that we enjoy or used to be. It's also about that we're following steps that um, what's growing up and we're into the new industry. That's a amazing scene that I've met, ever met. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Wei. I think Nana also wanted to share something with us on that front. So Nana, the mic is yours. Yeah, um, and mine is very evident, especially with um, with what Chris here, who kind of highlighted, you know, being creative and being technical as once in the course. And I just wanted to point that out. Maybe we didn't. I just wanted to do that because um, just from the very beginning, we could all tell that Chris was more very sound and audio engineering, you know, um, guy and to be able to fuse that in literally almost every subject we did was amazing in uh physical computing in our creative coding advanced coding in some of our ml and in this final project like you know you're able to put pieces of yourself in a creative way and that was a beautiful thing about it i'm a design guy you know more of user experience and you the ui as well just like yeah just like um um way over here so i was trying to piece all of that by keep an open mind so if you are very technical i feel like this course also allows you to be creative because in all the things you see with the examples with idea ideation and everything you find things you are interested in and you're able to fuse it in your own in your own space like there were so many people who were doing different things and you could tell pieces of people in every single part of the course so i feel like that was a great part chris was a, is a like the best example i can think of and i feel like Phoenix, you agree with me on that. You know, he's he's the sound guy in our creative course, and that's amazing. So, Chris, I just wanted to throw you that alley you 
And then, yeah, just let you know that, yeah, you, you, this, this, this question is literally you in the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, like you said, um, I'm kind of the opposite creative coming into the technological side of it. Um, and you do expand on that for sure. Um, and that was kind of a motivation for me in the first place, you know, self-taught programming in my undergraduate, um, and really wanted to build on that and sort of have slightly more structured, uh, learning, but still keep it creative. And that's, um, you know, just a perfect thing about the course. Um, really, like Nana said, got to put into most um, final assignments, audio related, you know, music, sound, audio, visual interaction. Those were my things, um, <laughs> you know, bit of a running joke by the end of it, honestly. So, yeah. Thanks so much for sharing, Chris. Beautiful. We also received quite a lot of questions around the programming languages that students are facilitated to learn at the program. So it would be great to hear what you've been learning over this year. Who would like to go? And I um, jump for a little bit. So the first time we learned basically about JavaScript and HTML, some part of HTML and GLSL and some C is to do it in physical computing. And in term two, we're now running to learn C++ and also Python. So uh, we're kind of running through a, all kinds of language, but we learn, we really learn C++ and JavaScript well. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Wei. Anything else you would like to add on that front? Maybe Phoenix? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, we do. So I saw somebody ask about game engines. I mean, I'm a really established games creator. So absolutely. I mean, I just made a plug in for Unreal. Uh, if I walked out of, if I quit the CCI today, I could probably write my own ticket um, at a lot of game agencies, game studios. So, I mean, yes, you can totally go get a games job. In fact, we have games people that join. We have them on the degree this year. So Super possible. Can the CCI uh, courses open opportunities in the video games industry pathway? Absolutely. I mean, there's such a demand for machine learning stuff in games right now. Like, it, you're gonna you're gonna be good. Um, please don't make NF, NFTs for video games, though. Please don't do that. Please don't. I, I will teach you why that is ethically a bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Phoenix. Amazing. Moving on, we received this other question and it says, does the course only relate to application design like app or web or can it be something more artistic? I mean, yeah, we already touched on how open the assignments can be. Um, and yeah, you know, occasionally there are in the, the week to week assignments, you are getting slightly more technical um, assignments. But overall, you can you can be as creative as you like with it. It's, that's one of the amazing things about this about this pathway. Thanks I, I, I think it's, everything was artistic that I did, yeah. pretty much. Maybe we could show Chris's video now. Let's do it. This is a piece of Chris's art, by the way. I just made him, I just nabbed him to show it, like, right before the, this. So, you know, real. <laughs> Bear with us, some technical difficulties Any today. <laughs> Apologies. I don't know why it's taking so long. Maybe we can share like a link to your work, Chris, on the chat so people can Check it out as uh, well. Yeah, sure. One second. That would be amazing. Yeah, let's look at it for now. It's a huge project. Yeah. yeah, it's an amazing project. Yeah. OK, let's see if it loads, <laughs> and then we can <laughs> share it again. But do you want to maybe talk a little bit about your work that, that you've developed at, um, at the course this year, Chris, so people have the context? Yeah, so I was using the Unity game engine to make uh, audio visual art. Um, I, I, uh, my background is sort of trajectory was drumming, 
into uh, sound design and audio engineering, um, where I started teaching myself a bit of programming and um, developing a, a electronic music background as well. Um, and when I started performing live, I found just performing behind a laptop to be quite boring. Um, you know, I could just be checking my emails. Um, so I, that, that was my orig original uh, um, direction into getting into coding. So I've always wanted some kind of visual element to go with the music and live performances. And game engines gave me the most uh, sort of open way to do that, most control over all the variables. Um, so that's what this is, um, uh, interactive artwork using game engines. Mm. Um, Thanks for sharing, Chris. I think we've got another one that you would be able, you would be best placed to, to answer, which is one that we received that says, I would like to know if this course covers anything related to music and audio as um, a musician. What would you say to this person from your lived experience? Uh, well, like I said, you can make all these things come back to audio, or at least I made as many as I possibly could come back to sound, music, audio. Um, like I made two different synthesizers, one physical one and one digital one over the course of the degree, <laughs> which was, you know, speak for, speaks for itself really. Mm. Thank you, Chris. It's great and I want to add something, yeah? Of course. Yeah, I also do some like music works and I, uh, the favorite thing that I think we call it is uh, around the first time we learn how to use HTML and JavaScript to you uh, coding some music in the Mimic platform. So the difference between the coding music and the normal, like uh, the music we use, Logic or something to make, the difference uh, are clearly that um, uh, in computing, like in coding music, we use some sine waves, cosine waves, and uh, we def define the frequency to make more like um, changeable and um, let's see, just like kind of amazing sound that we um, could like hardly use um, like no normal way to record it or something like that. So I, I make some waves on the mimic and I record it and make them in my music and it really like makes me feel so good. But yeah, so I like it. Thanks for sharing your way. Amazing. Since you, were, since you were talking already about the work that you were that you've been producing at the CCI, we actually, we, actually, uh, we actually already uh, received a question that says, "What sort of work will I get to produce during the MSC?" So maybe it would be great to hear maybe from you, Phoenix, about an overall like idea of this, but maybe of course from each one of you about the projects you've been developing. Um, sorry, I was on the chat. So, what sort of work will I get to produce on the MSC? Okay, so I can talk about this. Um, well, you just saw one with Forest Daydream, you know, big interactive immersive installation. You can also build whatever you like. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty open with like whatever um, cool direction you want to go in. Like Chris said, he made a synthesizer. Um, we saw a couple synthesizers. I've seen everything from, you know, robotic clouds to like, what are some of the out there MSC projects? Uh, video game on the benefit of bringing wolves back to the Colorado ecology, to uh, games on vegan diet, to studies and research projects on thinking about post-colonial identity in cooking and uh, the layout of cooking, like cooking spaces and how we experience like Western cooking versus Chinese cooking. Uh, there's all kinds of things here that like, you are able to make. Um, it's more about like, are you more interested in like, you know, we had a student who made a, a method for doing design. Um, it, it's kind of the direction that like your heart wants to pull you in, right? So like, if you're really into wearable tech, right? We have these amazing machines like, you know, where you can embroidery sensors onto your clothes and and build like some sort of really cool embodied suit. Like, so there are all these options. You just sort of have to kind of pick what you want to do. So the I give you blue sky briefs pretty much the entire time because I'm an artist. I didn't want to get told what to make on my MSC. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to make. I'm going to say it's got to have you know, for PCOM, this many inputs, that many outputs. For, you know, your machine learning project, it might need to have these, use these tools, right? But 
the briefs are really open. You can kind of do what you want. Thank you, Phoenix. Is there someone else I would like to add something there about the type of works you've been producing? Yeah, um, I was just going to say the very nice thing about it is in the scope of whatever we're doing, you are allowed to go crazy with it. Like, that's one thing Phoenix always said, just go, just go, go, go crazy. But just if we're doing something in computer, um, in uh, machine learning, it could be whatever. In the scope of machine learning, if it's um, in um, creative computing, sorry, in um, advanced uh, PCOM, PCOM, physical computing, you know, if we're doing something with Bluetooth or whatever it is, Arduino, it could be anything but go crazy. So there is a good exploratory vibe with it in the context of what we're doing, and I like that. Yeah. Thank you, Nana. Lovely. We've got a few more questions as well that are around the application process. So maybe we could briefly talk about that, Phoenix. So we've got a lot of people asking whether they need technical requirements to apply or if a technical background is needed to apply to the course. Is that true or untrue? Um, hold on. Yes, no worries. Uh... Blah, 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 blah. No, you don't need to know how to code. Um, ideally, though, some creative coding would be great. And I hate to say this, but like we had, we have 300 applications so far and not that many places. So it is best if you have either a strong coding or design background, right? Or arts background. It's not required. Does it make you less competitive? Well, it depends on the rest of your portfolio. Like, <laughs> I look at people kind of holistically. So, like, if you've got the most interesting artwork I've ever seen <laughs> or really cool art that inspires my imagination, I won't care as much. But if you have never made anything in your life <laughs> and you send me a photo of your cat, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, so I, and if you, if you don't know how to code and you're worried about doing the MSc, I won't reject you. I'll refer you to one of our other programs where you can learn those skills and then ask you to come back maybe in two years. <laughs> so apply anyway. Thank you, Phoenix. Amazing. Then, yeah, we, we had a lot of questions around the portfolio as well. Um, like do programming skills need to be shown in my portfolio? Maybe do you want to like maybe clarify a little bit more about what is expected from a portfolio from your point of totally. view? Totally. Uh, what I look for in the portfolio is who are you, right? What do you care about, right? Um, if it was me, you would see pieces on ecology and horror because those are the, you know, two areas that I submitted for my master's. Um, but it depends, like who are you? You know, um, that's what I look for. I look for vision. So show me your vision. Show me what you make in the world. Uh, whether it's a work of design or a really cool piece of code you've written or a painting you've made, show me who you are. Does that make sense? That's pretty clear, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Phoenix, for showing that. Mm -hmm. Amazing. There's another question here that says, does the uni or institute offer part-time teaching or research assistantships to eligible students? Um, I can kick that up. So, yes, I'm about to steal Chris. He doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Chris, I'm still trying to hire you. <laughs> um, so yes, it does, particularly when you graduate, because I, I'm always looking for ALs to help me teach classes. And people who come out of this degree are really primed with the skill set I need. <laughs> um, so there you go. I've also tried to hire Nana and his, he said no. And I've asked him like six times. So I'll probably keep asking him. He'll probably go no. No, Phoenix, I've got another job. Uh, but, you know, it's it's the cool thing is that, like, we've always got a need for arts temps. We've hired, like, if you're really, if you're skilled, you're going to, it's going to be easy for you because there's a lot of work floating around the CCI. Um, that said, there's no guarantees. 
Thank you, Phoenix. <laughs> no, that's finally <laughs> agreed to. Yes, maybe he'll teach something. <laughs> <laughs> I, it that's was so news. funny at the, at the final show. Where I was like, Nana, you got to come teach this AR stuff. And I was like, no, no. And Nana's dad's like, yes, he will take that job. And I'm like, please, Nana. And Nana's like, no, no. <laughs> that's amazing. Beautiful. All right. Yeah, we received <clears throat> questions around the part-time format of the embassy as well. So maybe we should clarify that as well, Phoenix. Uh, what? Sorry. Is is it possible to complete it part-time at the moment? Oh, no, not that I know of. Unless Ben validated it and I'm unawares, which sometimes that happens. Our dean is amazing. He's a machine. Uh, <laughs> I know it's something we talked about and is in the pipeline, but right now isn't, uh, isn't there yet. So what is coming online next year, for those of you who work, is an online provision so I'm trying to work out how to like integrate the online and offline. Like I've proposed at this point, and I don't know if it's going to happen or not. It's something I've, this is some blue sky nonsense from me right now of, of a possible preview of a couple of weeks where the online people could come work at the CCI, but I don't know if we'll be able to support that or not. Something I would like to do. Um, but if you're working full time, having an online provision or having, knowing that if you do the in-person provision, there are online resources for you might really help. Thank you, Phoenix. And we were also asked, what sort of um, jobs can students apply to after graduating? Okay. Um, I mean, anything? <laughs> Maybe be more specific. What kind of, uh, is it creative technology jobs? What kind of cafe jobs? I mean, I don't know. We'd need to like bucket this. But... Uh, we've had people go work on satellite technology for space. We've had people go and take creative technology jobs at Google. We've had people go and, you know, take, start, start their own company because they can just freelance. Um, we've had people go to game studios, it, design agencies, TikTok. We've got a, a person who just joined TikTok. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Do you can work in the interactive space? You can go be an artist. I don't know. It depends what your goals are and how much money you want to make. Thank you, Phoenix. Okay, we're hitting the end of the session, and someone here as well asked if there was a possibility to speak to someone one to one, as I as they have a personal few questions. I guess what I would say here, just like contact us at cci at arts.ac.uk, and we'll make sure to find the right person to talk to. Um, what we've done in the past as well is like putting in contact like um, a few students with prospective students to just like have a quick chat about some stuff that they would like to clarify. So, you know, our email is open. Uh, ask us anything you might need and we're super happy to to help and support in, in any way we can. So that's definitely a, a yes. And then as we have like a few minutes left, there's like a few questions I would personally love to um, ask to the students about, which are, first of all, the teaching and uh, technical resources, we've already talked about it, but I would really like to hear from your lived experience, which are the resources that you found at CCI that have been more helpful and more useful for you and your projects and just your career progression at CCI. Uh, there's someone else, yeah, would like to share some bits about this. Maybe Yue, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so, hot purpose. Um, basically, like adrenal and uh, the, the slices, like, like uh, related to adrenal, and also some like sewing machine and 3D printing. Also, like, so if you didn't, if you forgot to bring a laptop to the CCI, you can also bring a laptop on the fifth floor. Also, there are like um, library sources. Also, um, let's say thirty printing, and um, even we don't own our like carting or uh, wood carting uh, room, but we could also uh, go to the Campbell's uh, Campbell's room to borrow something from them. So basically, I think. Um, most of the needs are being covered, and, and there are also a um, art, art shop, so we could easily get any tools that we want from them. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Wei. 
Nana, would you like to go next? Um, just let me know if you can't hear me. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say CCI is it was a warm time for me. It was very, it was very new and refreshing to find all of, the, um, all of these sources from online to the teaching stuff as themselves as a resource. And um, I'll say. When it comes to the physical resources we need for our physical computing, it was really good. Like we had every single instrument we could find from soldering units to Arduino kits for everybody specifically to the um, the, the technical support team who are really great. So I feel like CCI, the, the technical resources, CCI is a gold mine. Like I've never found a space which is just so cool and better. And like I said, the technical team are on job some of the best minds to, you know, you're finding a creative problem and they come and help you. They literally sit by you. So I was just somebody who liked to go into CCI every day. I just liked the space. It was great. You know, it was really unique going to campus every every time I go, literally every day. So I used to see Phoenix a lot. And um, that's another advantage I wanted to point out. Um, I feel like we're slowly breaking away from COVID and its restrictions. And we were really in the midst of it. I remember I spoke to Phoenix about this. So um one other great resource is each other trust me i really meant that i was able to connect with chris a lot with one of my friends dan you know um so that was really really great to you know have this interpersonal connections i literally wrote an exam with chris i just remembered that's actually really cool on campus we're literally the only two people on campus when we wrote an exam um so there's that um teaching resources like i said the human the uh you know the lectures the professors themselves are from Mick to Alex to Rebecca to Phoenix herself, who is an example of superwoman in my book, because she was every doing everywhere, doing everything. So that was the. So I feel like um, I can't stress enough how CCI provides you with every single tool you need. Just don't be scared or don't be shy to ask if you if you come through. Like don't be scared to ask even anything for our final projects. Trust me, they were on job. So yeah, that was great. Thanks for sharing, Nana. That was lovely to hear. So yeah, it's 3 p.m. already. So I'm just going to quickly ask for a quick round. Um, and I'm going to ask you, what's the CCI community like? You've already all like touched on this slightly, but it would be nice to sort of like give closure to the session with this like little snippet. So who would like to start? What's the CCI community like from your experience? Yeah, I'll, I'll say something. I mean, it's just a big, it seems like a big family, really. You know, you can always, there's a, a Slack page going, you can always ask for help. And if you need help, you'll get it from someone. Like there's so many varied people there that someone somewhere will be able to help you if you're having problems. Thank you, Chris. UA, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So I think it's like, um, our students and our professors are more like a um, team, as Chris mentioned, a team and um, we're friends. Because I think it's really like um, our teachers really friendly to us because we can ask our questions whenever we need or we can uh, book and you know, one tutorial. So it really helps me a lot because I'm really bad at writing and um, Hunter and Phoenix course helps me a lot. Yeah, that's it. And especially they are like um one one teaching to, uh, teaching experience and uh, that um built my ambition. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ay. Nana, would you like to add anything else to that? Yeah, um community on a whole was really great. You know, we've got people from all different disciplines, so that was really nice to see um and you know i really like, there's one area i really like which is the canteen area where there's a lot of engagement people come up and talk to you so that's great so um you never felt too distant or too ignored or whatever so there's that i feel like it's really open open and diverse are the two words i'll use open diverse and you're very resourceful so open diverse and resourceful yeah mm -hmm. thank you nana that's great to hear Beautiful. Phoenix, would you like to add anything before we give closure to, to the open day here today? Um, <clears throat> sure, sure. Uh, 
First off, uh, you know, if you want to come play this game show, uh, I'm your host, Phoenix Perry. <laughs> <laughs> you will be making uh, challenges. You know, we'll see if you can beat this. You know, can you survive? Uh, no, but seriously, it's a good time. And if you need to find me, I'm available um, through my CCI email, which you can find on the internet. Or, you know, if you have any specific questions about the CCI, uh, you know, Gigi is going to post the email in the chat uh, now on YouTube. So you can uh, email us. And I don't know. I'm fun. I'm fun to study with. It's a good time. You'll learn a lot. It's challenging. It's going to change you. You won't be the same person when you when you leave. <laughs> I, if I have anything to do with it, that is. Um, okay, <laughs> that's it. Thank you, Phoenix. Thank you, Chris, Nana, UA, for joining us today. And thanks for everyone watching. I hope this was an insightful and useful session. Again, as Phoenix mentioned, we're, our inbox is always open. So email us at cci at arts.ac.uk. And we can just keep the conversation going over there. And in the meantime, yeah, we'll hopefully we'll meet in real life soon. And we'll hear from you very soon. Thanks, everyone. And take care. Bye for now.